Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Steph Garafa, Social Media Manager for Cisco Learning and Certifications and guest moderator for this week's chat. Before we get started, a reminder that we'll be taking your questions live throughout the show. So use the Cisco Chat hashtag on Twitter or post your question in the comments if you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. In today's chat, exams versus continuing education, your route to recertification, you'll hear stories from Cisco certified professionals as they share their personal recertification journey. You'll learn about the various ways that active Cisco certification holders can recertify, the lifelong learning mindset, and how you can make sure you keep your Cisco certifications active. Okay, so joining us today on the panel is Braden Balkema, partner and CTO at the KR Group, Cisco Systems Architect, Joe Sprague, and Cisco Distinguished Engineer, Joe Clark. Thank you all so much for joining today. Okay, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start with a brief overview of the recertification policy. Joe, I think that you're our uh, designated expert on this here. So let's take a look at, at a high level, the need to know is behind that Cisco recertification policy. I'll turn it over to you, Joe. Sure, uh, thanks, Steph. So every three years, and all, let's talk about the timeline. Every three years, you've got to recertify. You've got to reattest or, or, or restate that your skills are uh, where they need to be for a given certification level. Uh, there's a lot of choice uh, you have in how you can do that, though. Uh, we've always had an ability to recertify with exams. If you're that type of person who likes to take a test again, um, every three years you can go and take, depending on the level, uh, one or multiple exams and recertify. It doesn't have to be the same uh, exam that you passed or even in the same technology area that you passed uh, when you got certified. Uh, you can be your career may have changed, you can be looking at new things and you want to say, I have a, uh, a different set of skills that I would like to assert that I'm uh, proficient in and go take that exam. But there's another choice. Some people don't like to, uh, to take tests. Other people are evolving in their career and they need to either gain new knowledge in the area they're in, or there's something that they're very interested in that they would like to learn more about. And for that, the those types of individuals, we offer continuing education. Uh, continuing education, you earn credits, and these credits can be earned by taking training courses, either online in our digital learning or with our uh, partners or, or in an instructor-led uh, type of environment. Uh, and as you take those courses, you earn those credits. And you don't have to wait to the very end of that three-year period. Uh, you can choose to Whenever training comes around, you can choose to take those uh, those opportunities to earn continuing education credit. But we have other things now that, that we're getting back together in terms of events. Uh, there are other options. You can go to our Cisco Live events, and we're doing three globally every year. Um, and you can earn credits for the technical sessions, uh, the, the tutorials or technical seminars, or the labs that you attend at Cisco Live. Um, and as you, you continue to work, you gain credits. You can gain some credits for uh, Cisco Live. You can gain some credits uh, for uh, the courses. And you can also gain credits if you like to uh, give back to the community and say, I'm going to write some questions for exams. For those questions that you write that are accepted, you'll gain credits for that. And when you hit the level over those three years, when you hit the level that corresponds to the certification level you have, you have the number of credits, say if you're a, a, a professional, CCMP or DevNet professional, CyberOps professional, uh, you need 80 credits. So when you hit that level, you automatically recertify for the next three years. Now you can mix and match as well. So we, we just talked about exam, we talked about continuing education. The other option is you can say, I want I have an opportunity, I wanna take an exam here, maybe a specialist exam um, to attest that you have a, a proficiency in one area, and that gets you part of the way there from a recertification standpoint. And then you have an opportunity to uh, take some courses and you can get some training and get the rest of the way towards that, that recertification. So a lot of options, we've created it to be very flexible and it doesn't matter what level you are, associate, professional, specialist, expert, all are open to uh, exam recertification and continuing education uh, recertification. 
Thanks, Joe. Um, can we take a look at the different certification levels um, to see what the requirements are for our audience um, watching online? We can uh, we can certainly take a look. To, so for the any associate uh, level uh, certification, we have uh, and that associate, I mean, CCNA, DevNet associate, CyberOps associate, 30 credits. You need to earn 30 credits um, or pass uh, an a, a associate level or higher level exam. Um, for specialists, let's take it one step at a time. For specialists, it's 40 credits. And again, uh, a specialist uh, level exam or higher. Uh, for professional, uh, it's 80 credits, as I mentioned, or you can take one of our technology core exams, or you can go get one of your uh, expert level certifications. You can go get your CCIE or DevNet expert. Uh, with CCIE or the expert level certifications, um, you can go get another CCIE or another expert level certification or your CCDE, uh, or you can earn 120 uh, continuing education credits, or you can mix and match. So you could uh, pass a technology core and then go earn 40 uh, continuing education credits. You can pass a specialist exam or 80 continuing education credits. Um, you can uh, uh, pass a core exam and a specialist exam. You'll get a professional level certification out of that and you'll also recertify your, your CCIE. Or you can pass the, the CCDE written. That's one exam uh, that you can pass and that'll also recertify your expert level certification. Thanks, Joe. Um, to our audience watching online, this slide is for you. So um, whichever Cisco certification you have, leave a comment below and let us know if you are a CCNA, CCNP, CCIE. We wanna hear from you. Um, and now let's take a look at the individual journey. I'm going to turn it to Brayden. And Brayden, if you can tell us a little bit of background on where your tech journey began, how you've continued to maintain your active certification status. Certainly. Um, my Cisco journey started a little over 20 years ago, working network technician, network administrator job in a small hospital. And then I moved into the world of consulting where certification became something that was not only encouraged but required uh, both as part of the job and as part of our partner status and so i began with the ccna in 2005 and added the ccda in 2006 and when i did that that's when i realized being new to this process still that that was that automatically recertified that ccna for me so as joe described being able to have similar tier or higher tier exams recertify became kind of an automatic path for me. So I built on that over the years, adding CCNP voice in 2010, um, and then even extending some of the basics with a CCNA wireless a few years after that. Uh, so as a partner, as somebody who's interested in that sort of lifelong learning approach, um, the continuing education credit option was not there at the beginning part of my career. Um, and I still, you know, at, at this point, I take advantage of both, but having built from an associate into professional level certs, um, these days I use those core exams to keep everything current. And sometimes it's because I'm refreshing the latest round of knowledge within a track like collaboration, one of my personal specialties. But sometimes I, I look at a different core exam to recertify everything. Um, it, it lets me keep everything current and still learn things. And because I'm in consulting, the, having the initials behind the name uh, is an added bonus. Thanks, Brayden. So it sounds like your journey has basically been recertified uh, via exams. Is that correct? Yes, uh, somewhere between two and three years, unless there's some initiative for let's go after this certification as a company. I'm using one or more exams to take care of that recertification process or as part of keeping various partner statuses with Cisco current for my company. So which would you say comes first? Are you pursuing the next level or are you thinking about recertification first? For the first probably 15 years, it was about the next level and it was just nice to know that the recertification was going to happen as part of that achievement. Um, these last six years, it's been same level. Uh, 
I haven't specifically decided whether to try to move up to CCIE or look at CCDE instead, but I've, I've used both the older CCIE written collaboration exam from a couple years ago, and then last May used this uh, collaboration core exam to recertify again. So at this point, I'm good through May of 2024. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So we've heard a little bit about what it's like to recertify via um, upskilling and taking exams at the next level, but let's turn it to Joel. Um, Joel's experience is more on the recertification via continuing education credits. So Joel, I'd like to hear the same from you about your personal certification journey. When did it begin and where it's brought you today? Sure. So I've, you know, had industry uh, certifications for more than 20 years now, but about 15 years back, I got my first Cisco certification, CCNA, like most of us, uh, for a job. And, you know, 2010, it was coming up for renewal. I uh, sat the switch test the last day I had to renew that certification, and I failed by about one question. You know, it's five, 10 points, just missed it. And that was, you know, just heartbreaking. And I took a few years off, honestly. You know, I wasn't ready to start from scratch. And then a few years after that, you know, a new job had new requirements where it made sense to have the Cisco certifications again. So this time I went down the data center track, made it all the way to CCIE, four attempts, but finally passed that lab. And, you know, since then I have kept current. Um, the first renewal was just, you know, with the core test, the traditional way. But after that first renewal, the continuing education program came and it really gave me, you know, a lot more options where I wasn't just rehashing these same data center studies, which didn't work well for me. I used UCS every day, but the Nexus and the MDS topics, I would have to basically every two and a half years, start from scratch, refresh all on it, you know, find labs to work through it. So I have renewed twice now with a continuing education and I'm working on a third one. And I really use it, you know, as soon as I finish a recertification on my CCIE, I start looking for the next opportunity. So, you know, as things come up at work, I look for training that will also give me the CE credits. So this last time around, you know, I was about a year after the certification and work wanted us to uh, get the DevNet Associate. Uh, the courses weren't available yet. They hadn't been published. Uh, you know, this was the spring of 2019, but we had the network programmability courses in the digital learning library. So I took both of those, um, passed the DevNet Associate. That got me a little over halfway there. And then I got assigned to a new customer who was in the midst of a TrustSec project. Well, I was a systems and virtualization guy. I was not heavy on security yet. So I, you know, again, looked at the learning library to see what, you know, could get me more up to speed and get CE credits and found the security core course, which I went through, you know, it helped me with my job. I was able to choose something that was applicable to what I was doing now versus when I got the certification and was working uh, as a data center guy. And, you know, I was able to renew and now I'm starting to work through time number three here. So again, work wants us to get the Meraki certification. So a couple weeks ago, I finished off the ECMS two, got another 18 points of my 120. And, you know, now I'm looking for what comes next. I have, I think, a year to go still to get the rest of my points here. Yeah. And I, I think you touched on something that is fantastic because the the key to recertifying via continuing education is that it doesn't necessarily have to fall within your certification track. And Joe, I see you nodding because I find that a lot of courses, they don't necessarily fit into an existing certification, but you can learn the skills for technology that you might be using in your day to day work. Um, Joe, did you uh, you said you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I actually, I, I like a little of what both Braden and Joel were saying there. Braden was talking about how you, you keep learning. We got a slide coming up on that. And as you, you keep learning, you keep recertifying. And that's like a, a nice, I call it a byproduct. And, and Joel, I, I, I share uh, a, a little of your story. So you needed to go to the trust second and, and 
you found that by learning that um, that helps get you uh, get you towards that recertification. I was kind of the same way. I um, I got tasked with with doing the data center build for a Cisco Live conference in Europe. Like, well, I, I kind of understand the premise, but I, I don't really know enough about uh, like UCS manager and server profiles and all of this stuff. So like, I'm going to go learn that. Uh, because that's something that that I just I need to get better at, and so I went and did the the same um, Cisco Digital Library training around data center and Hyperflex and data center automation. Um, so it it, it it that was definitely not my background. I started out in network management. I got my CCIE route switch because I was in tech, and that's what everyone in tech had to do. But I didn't find myself using it as much. And stuff to your point. Um, that you that not everything falls within a certification. It was a long time looking around at what is it in the certification landscape that reflects what I do in my job in network management operations and then starting to get into automation. Um, fortunately, things have, have really caught up from a certification standpoint in, in the automation regard. But what was very valuable for me is looking at those training opportunities that don't necessarily always reflect in, in a in a cut and dry certification, but they allowed me to keep my skills very fresh, make the difference that I needed to make, do what I needed to do as part of my day job uh, or extracurricular activities uh, and, and make me feel like a, a, a better, more well-rounded engineer. Thanks, Joe. That's, that's a great insight. Um, let's take a pause and take some questions. So we have one coming in from LinkedIn. Uh, the question says, I am CCNP Enterprise Certified. If I take the CCNP Cyber Ops, will it also renew my CCNP Enterprise? Joe, I, I see you nodding again. Um, why, don't you, why don't you take that one? <laughs> There's yeah, there's there's a little bit of complexity to this question. So you're you're a CCMP enterprise today, so that's fantastic. Um, and if you take your CCMP cyber ops, so there's not a CCMP cyber ops. There's two exams that you'll have to take, uh, but you're already certified as a, a CCMP enterprise. So if you go and you take your cyber ops core exam and you pass that. Um, then you will be on your way to CCMP CyberOps, but you will also have recertified your CCMP Enterprise at that point. So you'll have a uh, Cisco certified specialist certification in the CyberOps core. You'll have recertified your, your CCMP uh, Enterprise as well. Then if you want to complete that uh, uh, CyberOps uh, professional, and I absolutely encourage you to do so, you need to take a concentration um, in cyber ops. So you take that concentration and you'll have both a, now you pass it, you have both a CCMP enterprise and a, C, uh, a cyber ops professional. Um, and you'll be part, uh, part of the way through in recertifying that CCMP enterprise again. So you'll have already recertified it once. And if you pass another concentration after that, that first one to get your cyber ops pro, you'll have recertified your your CCMP enterprise again. So you absolutely can recertify your CCMP enterprise doing something in another technology track, but you don't have to go the full cyber ops professional yet just to recertify that CCMP enterprise. Thanks, Joe. Joel, the next one's coming to you. Um, we have Jeff from Facebook asking, I am recertifying my CCNP, and I'm curious what courses go towards the continuing education credits to keep the certification. Yeah, so this is really what I love about the CE program is the courses are really, you know, almost anything in the digital learning library. Uh, I regularly go to ce.cisco.com or which is where you can look up the item catalog. But if you have digital learning library access, most of the courses are even flagged there where it's, you know, you will see in the description of the uh, course, there will be a little flag called out if the course offers CE credits. So, you know, it's really up to you. Um, there's hundreds of courses that offer credit. It is up to you to, you know, really determine what is most valuable to you at this time whether it's, you know, just taking, if you're just trying to renew this cert, you don't have something new you really need to learn, it might make sense to do something you already know well, where, you know, honestly, you're not looking for a big challenge, looking to learn a bunch of new things, you just want to renew. 
But really, I encourage taking the opportunity, you know, you are able to renew that certification without being tied to just that track. So look at the available courses and see what might be most valuable to you, you know, whether it's today, something that you know is coming up, or even just something that interests you. I love that advice. Um, Brayden, I think, I think you can field the next one. Mohammed from Facebook is asking, for personal reasons, my CCNP expired. What options do I have to reactivate my certification? Yeah, that's um, that expiration. Like you said, that's, that's personal reasons. So hopefully everything's moving forward for you there. But what you're looking at is essentially starting over. Um, so whatever concentration you're after, uh, presumably when, when you say just CCNP, you're talking CCNP enterprise replacing the old CCNP route switch. You'd be looking at taking that concentration exams that go with a particular area within that that you're interested in, and then also taking the enterprise core exam, and then you'll have the new certification, different nomenclature and everything that goes with that, but it is a starting over. Yeah, that's really challenging because you put in so much time and then when your certification expires, um, Joe, we, we've talked a lot about the value of certification and recertifying and how, how much weight that carries. Um, when, when someone goes into a job interview and their certification has expired, um, how, how does that communicate to the person who's interviewing them? And how does that differ from someone who has continued to recertify? Not a, it, it, it's a, it's a, in some ways, a dangerous question. Yeah, um, it's a loaded it, question. <laughs> it's a loaded question. Um, it, it really, it really depends on the story you tell. And, and by story, I don't mean a spin. I, I mean, in, in this particular individual's case, there's personal reasons. There's, there's been lots of, of mitigating circumstances of late uh, that we can all uh, look to and, and, and tell um uh, a, a compelling story that, that maybe it, 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 for whatever reason it didn't work out. Uh, one of the things that, that Cisco tried to do to help mitigate those circumstances was to offer some extensions, uh, but not, uh, uh, unfortunately, it may not work out for everyone. So it, it on the surface, you may think, well, the person who, who continued the, who, who continued to work and, and work to, to get recertified, um, they it obviously meant a, a, a lot for them, and they and, and, and they stand out. Uh, but it could be as well the person who who let the certification slip uh, didn't do so because they were lazy, or didn't do so because they just didn't have the commitment. Um, circumstances may have shifted; they may have wanted to take a risk and pursue something entirely different in their career and and put themselves out there and that's admirable and if you can come back and you tell well these are the these are the lessons i learned this is what where i'm at now and what i i've seen and what i've and what i can deliver now because i've had those experience because i've seen these things um it, it it's all going to vary and that person could be even more compelling in, in, in what they're doing in their, uh, in their interview. Obviously, if, if you're in this technology, if you're in this, this area of IT, you want to keep those certifications going because it does show that you're on that continual learning, that you're always up for that next challenge. But you have to do what ultimately is right for you, what you want to uh, achieve and what, what will fulfill you in your career goals. Um, and always when you're doing that, think of the experiences you can gain and wherever you go next, think how you can apply those experiences to be as successful as possible. Absolutely. Let's take one more question before we move on to the next. So let's see here. Chris from Facebook asks, I'm, I am a CCNP enterprise. Do I need to take all the CCNP exams or just the core exam to recertify? Joe, I think you might know 
the entire recertification guidelines by heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, you don't have to take all of the exams, uh, Chris. If, if, if you're interested in the exam route to recertify uh, and you're just looking for one exam to take, uh, you need to t uh, take and pass a technology core exam. It can be the Enterprise Technology Core or any of the other uh, Technology Core exams in the networking infrastructure uh, realm or the DevNet realm or the cyber realm. Uh, so just that one exam to recertify. Uh, but certainly, uh, like the, the, the first question that we got, if, if you want to go and get that, that CCMP, uh, I think Braden would, would, would like you to get collaboration. Uh, you can do that. CCMP, uh, DevNet Professional, you can do that. Um, those options are available. You just need to pass that core exam or two concentration exams. This depends on, on where you're at and what you'd like to do. Okay, um, we just had one more comment and I, I have to ask it. So this, I think this will be a great all hands on deck to respond to this question. So Saba from YouTube is asking, what are the best resources for training with continuing education credits? Brayden, I'm going to turn it to you because I know that you have been looking into recertifying being continue, continuing education. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you would go first? So the digital learning subscription is a great place to get started. And even for people that are on our team that are new to the certification process, I'm even steering them toward that as a place to start building a baseline of knowledge even before they're going for formal certification. So absolutely, you, you got a big library to go after. Just jump right in with two feet, no hesitation. Thanks, Braden. Um, Joel, how about you? Well, you know, I'll give two answers here. The funnest way to get credits is going to Cisco Live. Uh, you know, sadly, I wasn't able to make it this year, and we were virtual the two years before that. But there is nothing like meeting up with your peers uh, there. Though I will say, uh, it gets tough. You have to actually take some time away from chatting with everyone and you know people you haven't seen for a year, and actually attend some of the sessions, or you're not going to get any CE out of the trip. Uh, but then also, you know, obviously not everyone can pay for the digital learning library. There are free courses from learning at Cisco that um, offer CE credits. Packet Pushers has a great collection. They update that post periodically that has uh, the free resources that are available for CE credits and renewing your certification. Um, I don't have that link handy and obviously can't do it through this platform, but it is very easy to find out there. Or sorry, it is not CLN, <laughs> but it, it, they are Cisco courses that offer CE. How about that? Joe, do you have anything to add? Well, uh, Joel mentioned uh, the Cisco Learning Network, uh, CLN. Um, it, it, it's not, we're, we're looking at opportunities there. Uh, we're continuing education. Uh, there are learning paths out there where you might uh, be able to uh, earn uh, at some point in the future, continuing education. Uh, but it does have an opportunity to uh, meet with your peers, to gain the uh, knowledge or discuss things, problems you might be having, uh, thoughts, uh, uh, get others' journeys that they might have gone through that you might want to get some inspiration on. Uh, and there's also links out there to uh, various training courses. Some, you know, need a full uh, CDL subscription, so ad hoc courses that you might be able to take uh, to earn continuing education. I also echo what, what Joel said, that Cisco Live is a lot of fun. Uh, and some people do really like writing exam questions. I know one individual, I won't name him, I don't know how he's so good at this, uh, but there are people out there who like writing exam questions. And if you're prolific and, and good at that, that can be a great way, a free way, uh, to earn continuing education credits and give back to the community. Okay, we're, we're getting close on time, but I wanted to share this visual because I think it is so powerful. Um, it shows how continuing education works and the spirit of continuing education. And the thing is, it's amazing how different journeys can be. If you ask any member of the Cisco CERT community, they'll tell you it's not the destination, it's the journey. So looking at this visual, this is really what the learning and certification journey could look like. Now, before we wrap up, I'd like to hear from each of you, 
what is the best way to think about recertification? And what I mean by that is, when is the right time to start thinking about recertification and how should you approach recertification? So I already said it, but for me, I start thinking about it the day after I, you know, last recertified. And that's, you know, what the continuing education really allows that because, you know, I can look at any opportunity that comes up where I need to learn something, where I need to upskill and see how I can apply that via the CE process. You know, before that, when I was just retaking that same CCIE written, it was always put it off. It was the other way around. It was, okay, I have to research in three years. I'm going to put it off as long as I can. It's that last six months, I'll cram in and refresh Nexus and MDS. So this, you know, I start day one now and I, I think it really, you know, it doesn't just make the process easier. It lets me be better at my job, being able to combine the learning of new skills I need with the recertification process. I'd absolutely second that, that last six month process. Is it doable? Yes. Is it ideal? Not really, but that's, that's what it was. So with the continuing education credits, you knock off several things. Like Joel said, you're immediately able to start on something the next day so that you don't have to worry about the timeline. You're able to align it with your passions. And then going back to one of our earlier questions, by being able to start right away, you buy yourself the maximum amount of time to get through that process without creating a crunch time at the end. And along the way, because as Joe and, and Joel have both said, you're not bound to a specific technology, credits are credits. So that can wander, that can vary. I know what I'm planning to do for the rest of 2022. I know what I'm intending to do for 2023. But what happens if something changes and I'm still 20 credits short and I'm approaching my May 2024 deadline to recertify and I need to change directions. That's perfectly acceptable with the CE model. And the sooner you start, the greater flexibility you give yourself. Joe, can you add a little bit about the lifelong learning mindset? Um, sure. So I, I, I'm, I'm glad you pivoted a little bit because uh, Joel and Braden took, had some good answers. Um, the, the lifelong learning is about what do you want to do next? Um, so as I was trying to think of my answer, I was thinking, what what do I want to do next? What what is the next thing I want to learn? Um, and I think the, the the people who get certified have that that kind of mindset. It's like, what what do I want to learn next? Where do I want to go? What what's what's the next challenge I want to face? Um, and that's where continuing education shines. And Braden hit it right off the bat saying that as you keep that that journey going you look at the the right hand side of that slide and you see that path as as you're 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 gaining those new skills as you're you're taking what you learn and practice it on the job and getting better and refining it you're working towards your your recertification and it might be that as you're working towards that recertification you realize that this is something you really like and you want to go and get a certification in that area. Uh, for example, automation. So the last time I recertified, we were building the DevNet expert and we were getting very deep in automation, very deep into how this uh, culture of automation plays in an organization. Um, and it was a great thing to do. It was, it, it was a, a different dimension of learning and a different dimension of, of technology or of looking at that technology. Um, so it's, it, to me now it's, what do I want to do next? I've, I've been doing the automation. I've learned some in data. So I've always, I could always learn more in these areas, but maybe I want to focus a little bit more getting back to some of the networking roots and, and looking at some of the new network overlays that, that are, are not even new network overlays, the network overlays that are present. And it's, again, the beauty of this program is, as you say, what will fulfill you? What do I want to do? You can shift, you can pivot, and you can still keep that, that certification journey going as you learn these new skills. Thanks, Joe. Well, that's all the time we have for today. 
I'd like to thank my guests, Brayden, Joel, and Joe, for your time and for a very interesting discussion. To everyone watching online, you're going to see a QR code pop up on the screen. If you scan that now, you're going to get a free trial to Cisco Digital Learning. You'll get complete unlimited access for three days to the entire library of learning products from Cisco. So scan that now. Um, and beneath that QR code, you'll see a link to our recertification policy and then also to the continuing education program. You can visit those links, see what you, what's required for you to recertify and then get your plan together. So um, you can, you can um, view the comments with the Cisco chat hashtag and connect with us on social media using the hashtag Cisco cert. And we're happy to provide more information on what we've discussed in today's chat on IT Professionals Day. Thank you so much for joining us and watching Cisco Chat Live. We'll see you next time. Bye.